guys, how you doing? This is Mango, etc. And I'm here to bring you a review for One Piece episode 956. Let's just talk about it. So, we start things off with Zoro getting Enma. So, I mentioned previously, um, I mentioned previously that I wasn't really happy with Zoro getting Emma and that goes to a whole thing of him his relationship with his swords which could which could be expanded on a little bit further than what I mentioned when you think about how back in War Seven when Zoro was stuck in a chimney he could sense that Chopper had um, one of his swords with him and also when you go back to Arabasta Arabast Alabasta um, the whole thing with where Zoro's one of Zoro's swords were under a rock and he knew it was under said rock so basically what I'm trying to get at, what I was trying to get at last week and what I'm trying to get into right now is that Zoro has a strong relationship with all his swords so for me it seems out of place for Zoro to give up one of his swords but let's talk about what happens in the episode now so Zoro gets Enma and we get that display of the first use of Zoro use, of using Enma and now I think overall it was better done within the anime than it was within the manga but I had one tiny small problem with what we got within the anime which I will talk about in a bit. So first of all, we see Zero, you know, just he just whips off the top, you know, to get himself ready to go. And he whips out Emma now. And now we get this like Dragon Ball Z style aura oh, just forming around forming around Zoro, this is this is actually Haki, and you know we see the arm go black, and you know we see the sword as well, follow the same suit, when I say black, well, it's really more of a purple, but yeah, we see it follow the same suit, and now he's like, so, so um, I can't remember who says it, but someone says to him, you know, just, just slice this tree, you know, see how it goes, he, he slices the mountain range, like, you know, like, please to the mountain cliff, and you know, just, just go on like that. It's gone like that, easy peasy, lemon squeezy kind of thing, you know. It was bar. It was bar to him. It was bar, literally bar. And now my small tiny little problem is the fact that it seemed slow. It seemed like in the manga it was just like whoosh, gone, everything gone. But within the manga, you know, you see like it was more done like an air slash technique technique where you see it traveling, you know, it take the tree and then it take the mountain the bit of the cliff. And don't get me wrong, it's still the same same strong attack, but it just seems slower to me and I preferred it the quicker way. If that's how uh, if that's how Oda meant it to be um implied, interpreted, you know that was quick, then I think we should have stuck with that. Because the slow, you know, doesn't have the same effect, at least in my opinion. But moving on, we then go on to see Enma draining Zoro, and that's something I really liked about about the episode. Then over the manga is that I could feel the draining more within the background music, within actually seeing it visibly, and Zoro like, you know, no, no, like, no, give that, give that back, come on up, come on up. So I found that more within the um within the anime. So like I said previously, I give that um I give that more to the anime than I do to the manga. Um. So yeah, we have that at the very beginning of the episode. Uh, just to talk about some other stuff as well. And I mentioned last week that how I feel like Enma is here to stay, and I can say that I can say why now, and that's simply because of the relationship we find out that. Enma has with Wado within this chapter, so, um, or episode, sorry, so I'm pretty much, I'm not, it's not 100% certain, but it's because that was mentioned that I'm pretty sure that Enma is here to stay for the long term. Uh, also within this episode, I might as well get all the Zero stuff out of the way, we find out, no, we don't find out, sorry, we see Zoro iron Niketsu, yeah, Niketsu again within this episode. And I just think, I feel like it's odd that even to now that they're still showing Zoro's reaction to to it. So, because like previously we knew that when Luffy had it, you know, Zoro's like, no, like, let me just see that one time. 
that kind of thing. So I do feel like at some point Zoro's gonna at least minimum get his hands on it. Him having it for me personally I'd have to see some of his swords break. And right now that would mean Anma or San Ketsu breaking because you know we know why those here to stay. We know why those here to stay. So for him to get and keep it, I'd have to see some swords break. But recent events have shown that Zoro is willing to give up his swords even though they don't break. Um yeah. So that's everything revolving Zoro. If we keep to this first bit of the episode, we also find out that uh, Momo was offered his sword, his one of his father's swords, but he's like, no, 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 no. not ready yet, not ready yet, not ready yet. And we also find out that Momo's sister doesn't think like this is the right time to be, you know, conversing with the people that she once knew, so she's gone off somewhere to hide, and we'll see her again at a later date. So we have a bit where we're in Udon, the prison, and Luffy is training his Ryu, and now. Uh, it's implied from conversation with Chopper that he is, he doesn't intend to leave the prison until he's got this down packed. And now, seeing as how we see him later on with Kingman and company, I guess it's safe to assume that he's got it down packed. And it's even more safe to assume that when we see him later on training, and he just seems to do it effortlessly, the tree was gone. So we have that as there, there as well. Uh, what else? What else? What else? So we know that Orochi has some info as well. He knows about Momo's sister hiding within the north, which I think is a lie. Um, yeah, but she, he, but she knows about when we're just hiding off somewhere, he knows about the change in the port, and he was also told about Udon, but because he got a phone call by the um taken over elephant guy, he thinks that Udon's cool, like, you know, there's nothing, nothing to worry about over there. Um, These are the, the three things that I'm mentioned so far majorly um are the major points of the episode at least as for me uh, but there is some other stuff that happened in this episode as well this episode was kind of full uh we have the whole scene where they're still looking over the captured um the captured samurai that were put in the prison that weren't let go even though they were told that the info was fake it seems pretty much that they it seems like they're giving up on them like there's no hope in saving them before the battle Seems like they're giving up on them. Uh, we have the whole thing with the other Yakuza bosses. They've rallied up some soldiers, so now they have. I think the number is four thousand two hundred soldiers up against <laughs> up against Kaido's thirty thousand soldiers, which doesn't include the members of Big Mom's pirates that have arrived. Because they don't know, they previously don't, they currently, sorry, do not know about the alliance. Um, and I think that's everything that I need to mention about this episode. I think this episode was a fairly solid episode, a good episode to end of the year. And so for those reasons, I am going to give this episode a four star rating. And of course, guys, I'm also for your thoughts and opinions. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Most importantly, take care. Have a nice day.